No price talk and no Lambos. This is not another crypto podcast. Welcome to Ignition. I'm your host, Gillian Gotzel, and each week we will be looking at the problems solved by blockchain. I'll be going deep, deep with the people building the apps and communities which are changing the world around us. Hello and welcome to the show with me, Gillian Gotzel. Now, today's guest is Adrian Creon, who is the CEO of Chainwise with some really interesting products. And I'm first of all going to say, you might not guess this by his accent, but he's not a native English speaker. Welcome to the show, Adrian. <laughs> Hi, Julian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, you're actually German. Yes, I'm actually German. I'm, I'm not born German. I was born in Poland, but I came to Germany when I was three years old. So I lived my life in, in Germany. But you've traveled extensively, hence your English is so beautiful and non-accented. I'm trying hard. <laughs> You're succeeding, trust me. Thank you. So anyway, we're talking today, now this is very interesting. Chainwise is the company that you're the CEO of, and you have two products. But the first product, tell me a bit about Wombat. Well, first of all, what is it, and why is it called Wombat? Oh, yeah, um, that is a nice story. So Wombat effectively is a wallet that we designed to be as easy as possible to onboard people onto blockchain and specifically EOS. That's what we started with, right? But in general, we're blockchain agnostic, but we started with EOS because, well, because of a few traits that EOS has in terms of UX and performance. Uh, so that's where we started. But we also realized that it's pretty difficult to onboard onto EOS specifically, right? Because you need to get EOS, you need to like buy RAM or get, a, get an account to begin with, a stake resources, and then only then can get going. So we wanted to, to shorten that process so that people can get a real on-chain EOS account without all the hassle. So it should take about 20 seconds to get an EOS account with Wombat, right? Cool. Um, this is where we start. Is it live now? It's been live since June and okay. um, we're pretty happy with, with how it's been going ever since. We're one of the top wallets. We're basically partnering with all big EOS games. It's going really great. The feedback has been really awesome. It's been better than expected, actually. So we're pretty happy about how it's been going for us because we thought that we'll be solving an actual problem, but you obviously never know until you should get, get out with it, right? And then we realized from the feedback uh, from, yeah, from dApps, from, from people using it, uh, we have a very strong community. It's not we're not the biggest community, obviously. We're not the biggest wallet yet, but um, we have a very strong community and very passionate people behind that. And also in the in the community, people are really passionate and help have each other's out and basically fight and argue for Wombat and for certain decisions that we've made because obviously UX that always comes at a cost, right? So we had to make compromises on other ends. But people are really happy with it, and uh, we're really happy with that. And so we came up with the name Wombat. I mean, for one, Wombats are cute, right? So we wanted to have kind of a cute mascot. Yeah. And second, they're marsupials. So they basically carry their, their kids inside their pouch, right? And this is, uh, we thought that basically Wombat as a wallet is carrying the dabs inside. So it makes a lot of sense. Okay, I like the name. Yeah. Originally, it was, just, it was just a prototypical name, um, but we ended up keeping it because, you know, as it is, everybody got used to it, and like we kind of liked it. So. Okay, so the wallet itself, it's really, for the user experience, it's really simple. I'm going to try it after this conversation. So literally, it's a couple of clicks, 30 seconds worth. Is that how it works, or how, what, how do you do it? What's called the mechanics? Yeah, so we're out on, on Android, iOS, and as a Chrome extension, and you can onboard yourself on, on any of these platforms. You just need um, a social login. Uh, we mostly work with Google login, but on iOS, you can also use different uh, logins like your, um, your Apple account. Um, so you log in, you type in a username uh, or an account name that you want for, for EOS. Um, then we create the account for you. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, then you can start using EOS dApps right away, right? And only if you, because obviously, I don't know whether everybody knows, but creating accounts on, on EOS costs money or in the form of EOS RAM, basically, that you, need to, that you need to buy. So creating an account currently is about $50 cents in terms of EOS RAM, and it's for free to users. Okay. So it's really easy. You're up there. Are you absorbing the cost then of creating these accounts? Yeah. So because we, we need to prevent fraud and people making thousands of accounts without actually kind of using them or whatever, selling them on, we basically only hand out private keys to people once they pay a small fee that they would basically recover our um, RAM cost. So okay, that's fair enough. 
we wanted to give people very easy access to EOS and have a fully usable account. But um, yeah, if they want the private key, then they can totally have it. It's, it's a super easy process um, at, at a small fee. Okay, and you said on the website there as well, there isn't a problem if you lose your keys, you're able to recover their accounts. Yeah, so that, that is obviously also a thing that, I mean, we're, we're really focusing on first-time blockchain users, right? Yeah. We want to make onboarding onto blockchain super easy and, and kind of a, a frictionless experience. So if I tell my friends who are non-crypto people, yeah, go ahead and buy Bitcoin, but if you lose your key, it's, it will be gone. They get scared, right? They get really scared because obviously people are used to, okay, I can call my bank if I lose my PIN and then I'll get a new one or whatever, right? Or I can call my email provider. I can email them or whatever. They, they are very used to being able to recover their their passwords and then their accounts. So uh, what we do basically is we offer people to store their private keys encrypted in the storage of their choice. So they can use uh, Google Drive or Dropbox to back up their keys. And I mean, they're, they will be safe there because they're encrypted, but um, we can always recover them, right? So if they, if they lose their device and then they want to recover their Wombat account and their EOS account, then they simply log back in with let's say Google, and they get the keys automatically recovered for them. Excellent. Okay, that's, that, that is a big issue. And if you're looking at the early starters, people who haven't, and uh, sorry, the, the newbies, I should say, people who ha- are not familiar with cryptocurrency and wallets, and um, so this takes away that fear factor that they, they will have their thing afterwards. So, you're, so I can see why, as a user, why I'm going to have a look at this and see how it works. Make, that's, that's a nice onboarding process. And then on the flip side, is it mostly gaming that the wallet's been used for at the moment? Yeah, I mean, gaming is a big part of, of blockchain at this stage, right? And it makes a ton of sense because um, gamers are generally used to, to deal with digital assets, right? Um, maybe 30, 30 or 25 years ago wasn't as, as much, but nowadays with all the in-game purchases with skins, with weapons, with items, with virtual gold, with coins and so on, they're effectively dealing with virtual currencies and virtual assets all the time without even being really aware of that. And so it makes a lot of sense to put these assets on the blockchain, right? Because gamers are very familiar with, that, with these concepts. And it, so gaming is a, is, an, is a very obvious place to start. Plus, you don't, you don't have all the kind of legal implications of unlicensed gambling, right? Um, there's a lot of gambling going on blockchain as well. Yeah. But it's a whole different uh, rabbit hole there. So um, gaming is a, is a very good place to start. This is also what we're focusing in uh, on, and EOS is very gaming heavy because I mean transactions up until let's say a month ago were really were really cheap. You could do a lot of them. You could do a lot of things on chain very cheaply, and this is how um, games have been designed on, on EOS. They've also been designed differently than let's say on Ethereum simply because of the low resource cost. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a big place to start. There's a lot of money going into blockchain gaming at the moment, a lot of investments being done by VCs. And I, with, we think that this is a very good place. It makes a ton of sense. So that's why we're mostly focusing on, um, on gaming at this stage and yeah, at, at the benefits that it brings to, to people right now, right? I mean, there's, a, there's obviously a lot, of, a lot of promises that blockchain brings to people in the long run, but in gaming, you can have the benefits right here, right there. That's cool. So how many how many games can people access? Or how many games have you linked up with, with the Wombat Wallet? Um, basically, you can access any EOS-based dApp okay. that implements the scatter protocol. So that, that is pretty much any, any dApp. Um, so also pretty much any game. We're focusing on a very seamless user experience because, as, again, we're also there for first-time users. So the, the games that we feature, we've basically handpicked, we've selected them, we've tested them for frictionless UX so that they don't have like um, huge onboarding processes there. They did basically tiny things like they get on, they get logged in automatically, right? Or they don't need to click buttons that look unfamiliar to them and, and stuff like that. We're basically focusing on also with our partner apps. And we currently have handpicked about uh, 20, I think 20 to 25 uh, apps, mostly games that we integrate kind of natively, but if you want, you can access any other DAP as well, right? That's cool. And um, you also mentioned before uh, non-fungible tokens. So how does that work in your world? I mean, EOS is, is a bit, right, the concept of NFTs is, um, is pretty new to, to EOS, right? 
There's effectively currently two standards on, on Ethereum. We obviously have ERC721 being the, the big standard. On EOS, there's basically two fractions. One is one being D goods, the other being simple assets. And there is no clear decision made on which will be the, the more successful one. We're currently more focusing on D goods simply because uh, because of a few a few technical technicalities, basically. But we're like we're very agnostic to technology in general, right? We're we're not solely focusing on EOS. So we'll also be, um, if need be, we'll also integrate with simple assets. And we really appreciate both the directions that these um, that these initiatives are going uh, because they're effectively really different. So D goods allows for simple creation of very lightweight or comparatively lightweight uh, NFTs. And you can basically make anything into an NFT. You can also issue your own fungible tokens for the standard. It's pretty cool. And I mean, it basically works the same way as on as on Ethereum. And to us, because, because, because we're focusing strongly on gaming, um, NFTs uh, play a big role in, in that, right? Because all the, all the in-game items can be NFTs and we really appreciate making them NFTs and being able, for instance, to display them inside the wallet directly so that you can start interacting with them. You could trade them, you could lease them even, um, which makes it even more interesting, right? If you imagine you, you need a better weapon for some kind of a game tournament, for an esports tournament, and you only need it for like a week or two, instead of buying it, you could just lease it from somebody. And then, I mean, obviously, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of thoughts that put into that that could go into that. This, these items could be great over time, and then so the, the leasing fee should be higher if that could be great and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of interesting aspects to this. But that is very interesting. That's a whole podcast episode. Just about. That's, that's a whole rabbit hole, exactly, all by itself. Yeah. Like, wow, that's kind of mad. So in tandem with all this, you're developing your own game too, as well. Tell me a bit about uh, Chain Clash. Yeah, Chain Clash. It's actually we had this fun idea of putting putting crypto Twitter into a game, right? If you if you sometimes read a tweet from I don't know uh, Roger Veer or Justin Sun or whatever whoever yeah. um, on Twitter, and you get all the reactions like Oh no, Bitcoin is so much better than Bitcoin Cash, or Bitcoin SV is better than Bitcoin, is, or is, this is the real Bitcoin, or Ethereum is better than EOS, or Tron is better than EOS, or EOS is better than whatever. And people get really passionate about that. We wanted to give them a place to vent, effectively. So uh, that's how we created Chain Clash, which also helps us, by the way, learning about what it is like to build games on, on EOS and um, with NFTs and with D-Goods, for instance, having our own experience with that. But um, apart from that, we really wanted to, to give people this, this place. So basically, we have avatars representing individual crypto clans. So that could be an avatar basically representing Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum. We currently have five of these um, that includes EOS and Tron as well. But we'll be adding more of these clans. And these avatars are have a humanoid but android appearance, right? They are they they look like android humans, and they are branded in their in their clan colors, and they also have different attributes. So. For instance, you probably can't imagine that a Bitcoin avatar would be super swift and, and fast, but probably rather strong and slow, right? Whereas an EOS or Tron avatar will be much, you know, much more agile, something like that, right? And the, the, the really cool thing is that we're also bringing in real humans, so um, c- celebrities and influencers from the crypto world, so who will then also represent their coins, right? That could be... Um, we have um, Crystal Rose and, and Brock Pierce being in for EOS. We're talking to Roger Veer representing Bitcoin Cash. We're talking to, I don't know, all kinds of people who you could imagine. It would be great to have, for instance, Vitalik representing Ethereum and so on, right? So th- this is the basic idea. Do you need a journalist in there? Which coin would you represent? I don't know. I don't, I'm kind of agnostic too as well. I mean, I love EOS, but I've also, I also like Hashcraft and I like um, Algorand and um, yeah, there's Ethereum and mm, yeah, which one? I don't know. <laughs> it's not. It's not so easy, right? So you have to you have to pick a coin. Um, you don't necessarily have to. It takes a little bit uh, of the fun out of it if you if you're uh, clan less, let's say. But yeah. um, we'll we'll have a concept for that as well. Maybe maybe people will be able to draft you. Just like in American sports, and and put you in, in the clan of their choice, um, right? 
because there's going to be like planless versions and they, they will be able to assign you. We're thinking about a bunch of things. Yeah, um, we're we're still um, taking taking the signups for for more people from the crypto space, but we also already have quite a backlog already because obviously you can imagine that in the crypto space a lot of people uh, would be interested in being in such a game. I'm going to apply. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know what coin, but I'm definitely going to apply. <laughs> are, you, are you raising money for that at the moment? Did you say? Or are you? No, no, no. I mean, we're we're running a pre-sale of of in-game items, but this is not. It's not necessarily to like raise money, but to give people exclusive access to some of the assets because some of them are going to be really rare. You can imagine that uh, you can't have millions and millions of, um, let's say, yourself like uh, running around in the in the space. We we would um, want to limit that to a certain amount for a certain number. So we're we're basically just um, trying to to promote the game. Yeah, get get people interested in it. And uh, by by the way, we're selling a few of these items. Wow. That sounds, that sounds fascinating. It's like when the real world fudges with the artificial world. It's like, are we real or are we, you know, who are we? Yeah, there's a, there was a BBC documentary. It launched, I think, about three or four weeks ago, which also included our partners from DNA Block from LA who are, um, who are doing the 3D um, animations and, and the scanning and all this, all the producing and, and whatever. And this also included Chain Clash. There was a short scene where where Chain Clash was being played, and it was quite amazing. So we're we were on the BBC. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting. Well done, gosh! But it's interesting. If you think about it. You know, like those air coins. That game. I, I've, I've interviewed the founder of that. And you go around. Yeah. It's like Pokemon, but when you have all your different your alt coins, and you there was a period of about two weeks. I did nothing but walk around my phone picking up coins, <laughs> and then I stopped. <laughs> how, how, how much did you make? <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I, just did, I didn't even care about the amount of money. It was just the fact that it would go bing. And I think it's like, you know, on your phone, when you have a little red, that little red dot, was it blue? What color are they? Are they red or blue? Whatever it is, the color is significant because in your head, it, it clicks off that, that happiness thing, whatever. So it makes it highly addictive. So for, for little, for, I'd say maybe, maybe longer, maybe three months, I was going around with my phone, just clicking things. People yeah, I, I really like the concept. I just never gotten around to really play it. Yeah, don't, don't. It's addictive. I mean, it's, it's actually, it is great fun, but it is addictive. Wow. So you're, when will the, the chain clash go live then? When can people? We're planning on launching this early January. So it's, it's pretty much ready. We just have, we're basically just applying the last finishing touches. Um, it's still in private beta, but yeah, because of the, the CPU situation on EOS, it's kind of difficult to actively play it at the moment, um, but we're going to have a solution for that. And so the game is pretty much ready. Um, we're pretty much ready to launch it. Obviously, Christmas season is always a bit of a problem when launching a new product. So um, we're cautious about that. But it's it's pretty much ready, yeah. Excellent. Well done. Okay, so if people want to find you, Adrian, where's the best place to go? The Wombat? Is that a wombat.io? It's getwombat, getwombat.io. Okay. And you could find Chainclash under chainclash.com. Com. Excellent. Well, I encourage people to go. I'm definitely applying. Now that I have you recorded, said I think I think you said you were going to have me in. Didn't you say that? Did I hear you say that? <laughs> so I want to get involved there. We'll put you in the backlog for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no one puts baby in the corner. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you so much for your time, and I wish you every success going forward. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, and see you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.